welcome back to Nick's Tube. Today's lesson is about brushes. So I'm going to be playing around with the brushes here in Photoshop um, and all the different functions that they can do. Um, to work with the brushes today, I'm going to double up my toolbox, right? I'm going to double up my toolbox and I'm going to pull it a little bit closer because I don't need that whole thing there. It kind of gives me more space there on my screen. And now you can see I've got the two brushes brush like tools kind of doubled up. You've got a brush tool, a pencil tool, a color replacement mixer brush. So I'm going to talk about the brush tools and some of the functions that are there. And then you've also got this history brush and art history brush. So I'm going to go through all of these different tools and show you all the cool things that you can do with it in Photoshop here. So the brush tool is so much more than just the brush tool that it's showing you there. Um, things that you can do with the brush tool, you can download brushes, you can create brushes. Brushes can look like pretty much anything you want them to look like. So I've got a blank document here just for ease of the, the demonstration. I'm going to pull out my swatches panel too so I can quickly choose colors and I have to go to the color picker. So you can see I'm going to make some changes here. So the brush tool, I have the brush tool. This one is, is highly dependent on this options bar up here. So if I go to the options bar, you can see um, it'll first show me the, the, the size of the brush and the type of brush that I have active at the moment. I'm gonna go back to a general brush here so you can see me demonstrate how these brushes work. Um, and let me pick a color. Let's go with a blue color there. Okay, so I've got a, a standard brush right now, the size. This is the size of the brush. The brush is 100% hard. So if I come into my document here and I want, let me make it a little bit bigger so you can see it even better. And I click, you see that that brush is 100% hard. Um, it is a round brush. It looks exactly like what it looks like here. Now, if I made that brush soft, right? So 0% hard, you'll see that when I go to click, it's gonna be much softer, almost like an airbrush type effect. Other options up here you can experiment with are the blending modes. I'm going to come back to these in a minute. Opacity. So let me lower the opacity so you can see how much it looks lighter. It's a lighter color there. Flow is how much um, color is actually coming out of the brush. That's more related to stroke. So if I kind of did a stroke, it might be inconsistent, right, if I'm using flow in an interesting way. And then you've got smoothing, which will smooth out the edges. So let me go back to my brushes in here. Other things that you can do with the brush, you can rotate a brush from in here. Now you're not gonna see it with a circle, but I can also smash a brush. And so now it's gonna, the brush is gonna do this, kind of give me a, a line like that. So I'm just gonna do a bunch of different brush stuffs in here. Let me go back up to the brushes. Um, I can download brushes and I've downloaded these brushes that are all down here. I am viewing now default in um, Photoshop is to have the brush name and the brush st stroke clicked. I have unclicked these and I've only clicked the brush tip because I want to see what just the tip of the brush looks like. So I've got a cool, lot of cool brushes in here. I happen to love these chaos brushes from uh, brushking.eu. So let me choose some different colors in here so you can kind of really see how this one's going to kind of play out a little bit. I'm just kind of experimenting. I'm just going to make an overall composition. So brushes can look like anything. This looks like a, a watercolor brush even. Um, the site that I go to to download brushes is brushking.eu. These are user-based brushes. You can search in the different categories to find different styles of brushes because uh, people have created these brushes. Not all of them will work, but when you download it, you should be able to double click on the brush file and bring it into Photoshop. Another place that you can choose brushes is from the resources folder, graphic design, light and graphic design students. And I can show you that um, in class. Okay, so let me go back to my brushes. So I can, you know, I'm just going to fill this thing with brushes. I can have some fun with it, kind of mixing different colors together. Now, keyboard shortcut, the brackets next to the letter P changes the size of your brush. You can come up here and you could change the size of your brush, but it's hard to tell what size that actually is unless you bring your cursor down into the, see how small I actually made it? Unless you bring your cursor down into the document. And if you have this open, that screen, you cannot change the size because see how it's changing the number that's in there. So this guy has to be closed out, like get rid of this thing. Okay, yeah, okay, get rid of that thing. And then you can use the brackets next to the letter P to change the sizes. Now, if I come into this pan, this is my brushes panel. So notice how it popped up on the right-hand side. So this is going to show me other things that I can do with brushes. So I can change the shape. Now, all of these, you click on the word, not on this. Don't just click on this little guy right here because if I just clicked on this guy right here, yes, I'm adding these, but it's not changing my options, and I need to see what the options are there. So if I go to Shape Dynamics and I say, okay, now watch this. This would be my stroke. So this would be, be me taking the brush and draw, going through and kind of drawing like this. Right? Let me go back to white so you can see it right that's me doing that with the brush so shape dynamics size jitter this is how my stroke is changing down here angle jitter now it's changing the brush minimum diameter roundness jitter right it's changing the way it looks how about scattering how many right 
Make sure you click on the word. How, how is it scattering out? Is it count, how many am I getting? Right, less or more. There's so many different things that you can experiment with in here. Definitely suggest going in there and playing with it. Here's another rotate. Um, you can flip it X and Y. You can even bring it down so you can look at up, you know, the whole smash them together or just like one at a time, right? So again, this will refer to the stroke, but now if I go in here, let me make my brush a little bit smaller, and I click, you'll see that the, the brush is dramatically different. Now, once you make changes like this to a particular brush, you almost have to go reset it. Otherwise, the next time you go to use it, it's also going to have those crazy settings with it. Okay, so that is your standard brush tool. And another fun tool that you can have, if you're doing like digital painting, I'm going to show you an example of that in a different tutorial. But the mixer brush, let me make this a little bit bigger as well. The mixer brush is going to mix my colors together. So it's almost like a kind of a blending tool. Right now it's, it's white, right? White, see it up there? This is the style of the brush. But let's say I went with a soft brush like this. And those painters, you look at all these different settings that you can experiment with. But let me make my brush a little bit smaller. And you can see that I can kind of blend the colors together and um, almost do like a soft painterly effect. This would be better for if I was doing a digital painting. And that's another tutorial that's coming soon. But that's definitely something that you can do. Let me turn the, um, I make it 100% wet. If I made it 100% load, flow, mix, all that stuff. And you'll see that it'll, it dramatically changes how much it's mixing or how strong that tool is. So that's a fun one as well. For these other ones, I'm gonna to switch to another image. So this is the color replacement tool. The color replacement tool allows me to paint into my image. I don't, for some reason it's always neon. Even if I pick like a, a not neon color, right? It still kind of looks neon-y. Um, and if you choose black or white, it's just gonna suck the color out. But this is a way to color, hand color an image. There's a lot of other ways to hand color an image. This is just one way to hand color an image that's kind of cool. So that is the color replacement tool. I can also use the mixer brush on this. This is actually pretty cool. Take a photograph, try taking a photograph into Photoshop make my brush kind of smaller and now here's me um, instead of actually going through and painting I'm kind of just like painting meaning instead of me going through and painting turn that down a little bit. kind of drawing an outline I can use this and kind of make my own painting based on the colors and things that are already there Let me switch to a different colors so you can see how the white versus the black it's used. But you can make an entire digital painting like this based off a photograph, right? That you kind of traced and kind of made your own a little bit by kind of drawing or painting into it. Now, I want to show you that for this next set of tools, I'm going to go back to that brush tool and I just want to, I'm going to cover this tiger up. I'm going to show you what I could do here. Just tiger up. Now, one of my pet peeves is using the brush in the same size. So let me, let me not kind of go against everything that I say. Um, and then let me rotate this a little bit because, you know, it's always in the same direction. So I want to have some fun with it not being in that direction. Just kind of make a, a collage of stuff. Let me zoom out a little bit. I, I'm not even getting the full image right there, but you, you get the idea of what I was trying to do. So the other brushes that I want to show you here are very cool. One of them is called the History Brush. And so if you want to take a stab at what that's going to do, if my History Panel goes back and paints things the way it was, then my History Brush is going to paint things back the way they were as well. And what's very cool about this tool is it doesn't have to be this brush. It could be any brush. So if I wanted to paint things back in a in that same brush that I was using, right, then I can click with it and kind of bring the image back using that same that same brush effect that I had going on. Another cool brush in here um, is called the Art History Brush. The Art History Brush is going to paint back. Let me, let me make my cursor bigger. It's going to paint back my image in the style of like a fine art, right? So here's tight, short. So if I go to paint it back, you notice it's kind of almost like a Monet type of, fat, of like an impressionist kind of big, big, big dabs of color. Um, and this is this is very cool. There's so many options in here to experiment with. But if I make my brush smaller using the brackets next to the letter P, then I get more detail in with that brush. And you know, there's so many cool things that you can do with just this, a combination of these tools, um, switching be some of, between some of these and having kind of like your own artistic effect. And like I said, the smaller you go, the more detailed you'll get. There's so many cool things that you can do with this brushes, these brushes, it's unreal. So definitely consider playing with them and having some fun with how you can use them to affect or change your images here in Photoshop. Thanks for watching.